my Cattleya little fairy needs a clean up. I'm going to take you along. Thank you so much for joining me. It's a beautiful, beautiful day, a little bit cooler today. And I think this was a great time to check and see why my year, this year's growth is half of my last year's growth. And I am suspecting that there is not enough room in the pot for all the roots. It's a bit crowded in there by the looks of it. My tag is, yeah, was hard to get out. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking, suspecting, there's too much going on in the pot and that's why this growth is stunted, which is a shame, but let's have a look. There is only one way to find out what is up. I have new roots growing, otherwise I wouldn't be doing this. And uh, a cleanup is a cleanup, also much needed in inorganic media. I am of the opinion it's not a one time fits everything for all time. So there's no reason why that that this growth here should be have stunted that much. Absolutely none. No pests, no nothing. So my guess is that it's it's not doing well in the pot. I'm going to take advantage of the fact that it is growing new roots. Maybe it needs resituating, but a little cleanup won't hurt it at this point in time. Last year I had approximately nine blooms on the spike of my little fairy. And I do not see that happening this year. And uh, that kind of bothers me because she's gorgeous. Very, very fragrant, long lasting. And yeah, this is not the progression I'm looking for. This was the first year's bulb from when I got her, acclimatizing and all that. This is the bulb that she came with mature. This is the one I grew last year, which is the same height. That's what I want to see. And now I have this one. Not good, I don't like that. So let's have a look. When I unpot, I always try to pot towards the oldest part of the orchid, the back bulbs. If there's new roots growing in the front, I'm not pouring leca all over those. Easy to do with one direction of growth. Of course, it's a total different story if there's more directions of growth, but this is sort of my attempt to try and protect when I can the roots. And yes, there's a lot of death in here. Ooh-wee, a lot, look at that. Yeah, not good. Not good, so it's a good thing we're gonna intervene right now. I don't need a new microfiber, even though I brought one just in case, but I will wash the pot out. I will take out my old support and replace it with a new one simply because now I'm taking off bit by bit the old ones and giving them my orchids all the new ones with a white coating and all these roots are dead so next time next repot look at this that's the problem dead roots all around. The only thing that we have got going for us is all the new roots. And that's what we're gonna take advantage of today before I lose all my Lekka beads here. Well, 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 I'm glad I looked. I'm glad I could intervene in this like pronto. This is a two year cycle here. And this is where I see issues arise now that I've done it for long enough. 
that it's possible that the first two years an orchid will do great, especially the cattleya types. And then all of a sudden, because it's what they do, they dump their roots. It's not necessarily the growing method. It's what cattleyas do, but the growing method will perpetuate a problem because it's constantly moist. And that is what one has to be very, very careful when growing in anything in organic, self-watering, semi-hydro, is that this problem will arise and become more and more the detriment to the orchid if it's not addressed. So the other video I did, you could see, I was cleaning it up to avoid this problem. I'm very glad I filmed this because I have several that I think I need to be doing. But this problem we didn't have in our last example, I was cleaning up to avoid this issue. The root system was fabulous, loved the setup, but it's gotten bad. And this has to be addressed for the sake of the orchid. Otherwise, we can lose her. And I may just take off the back. We shall see. I'm going to get another bowl in order to clean up the root system. Well, I'm very, very happy that we had a look. So now let's get to cleaning this up. I may actually remove the back. Yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. Take off the back. Even though she would have been able to fit in the old pot, again, it matters not. And we can have a look. And that is looking pretty clean. Thankfully. Yeah, never know, right? Okay. Let's just get some hydrogen peroxide on that before we proceed any further. Just to be sure that nothing nasty creeps in there that we don't want. I'm just going to check the roots back here that look pretty bad. I just want to cut into one to make sure I know what I'm doing. They do feel firm, but they're Gone. Gone girl. Little fairy. Gone girl. So this again is a prime example of the effects of long-term semi-hydro on orchids that do dump their roots. Again, not all of them do, but there are quite a few, especially species out there, that will just periodically dump their roots has nothing to do with a growing method or anything of the sorts, but the growing method will determine if the orchid is going to go downhill. That was a clean root with lots of nice branches and I got it wrong and just chopped it off. Got to be careful, got to be careful. Just because it's brown doesn't mean it's dead, Nina. There we go, another one. But it will dump the roots, as orchids do, and the method itself will actually be a detriment, in this case, to the health of the orchid, if there is no intervention. And that is why, when I saw that this new growth was going nowhere, it is the end of the growing season, clearly, it's already producing a little sheath, I had my suspicions about what was going on in the pot. And I'm, I must say, I'm not glad that I'm right. But purposes of the example of what I was trying to talk about a couple of days ago, I'm kind of glad that I've got myself into this situation so that I can show what I was talking about. And don't do what I just did, just take a brown root thinking it's dead and chopping it off without following it all the way to the end. Because chances are there is still something branching somewhere. And why destroy that unnecessarily? 
That's just silly of me. Let's get in there. But we have new roots. Now, if this was an emergency repot and I just did what I did, I would be very, very angry. I'm not in this case annoyed a little bit, but not angry because all these new roots here will now get a chance to develop without the decay around them. And then maybe next year we will have another big growth again. One year on, one year off, as seems to be the case. But I want to avoid one year off. But now I know that this orchid has the tendency to dump its roots. I shall be much more vigilant. And what I'm going to do is only one microfiber. The previous pot had two. There's no need. I can see that this orchid is a little bit more on the wanting to be on the dry side. So I'm going to just use one microfiber and I shall be back after I've washed those roots off from all the um, decay. I'm going to take it under the sink and wash them off. All right, quickly wash that tap water off. I have very, very bad tap water. You, it's good to take it to the sink and give it a good wash off but don't leave my tap water on there too long right next step is to cover that cut and then we can prepare my little support pot her up and get her situated again cinnamon on roots big no-no cinnamon on open wounds and cuts every time, all the time, depending on what you're going to do. If it can dry out because the climate allows it to dry out without interfering, well, then there's a luxury there. If it's going to go somewhere where it's a little bit more humid, cinnamon, just to desiccate everything, everything around that cut area, avoids any kind of infection, helps it dry out, supposedly antifungal, antibacterial and all that stuff. I wouldn't know. I just like it on my ice cream, in my coffee and in my tea. Okay, let's make a quick doohickey. Let's get this right so that we can enjoy the blooms next year with a little bit more of a show as opposed to what I'm going to be getting this year, which I doubt is going to be a big show. I'll just take it around. I used to hook it and twist it and everything, but I don't do that anymore. And it's possible it's a bit too long, but we can always cut it off. So I'm going to be looking at my pots and seeing if I see similar signs of not productive growths. Because where there's one, there's more, usually. It's not like we're at the Highlander stage. There can be only one, so I'm going to check all my pots. And then there could be a mass what's in my pot video. I have another two months to go with warmish climate so I can get away with it for another two months and they'll still be okay. Now, for some leka. I would reuse my other leka, but it was very dirty and full of decay. I'm just going to boil it, rinse it, boil it and clean it up and put it back in my leka bucket for storage for the next one. That may be a bit too much. Those roots 
look shorter than they actually are, I think. So let's do it like that. Let's get my support just a little bit more straight. Goodness me, it looks like a noodle. All right. Direction of growth is very clear. And there's a lot more in here than I need. I don't want to stress the root tips. As they are used to this moist environment, I don't need to worry about them touching the bottom, etc. What's worse is pushing the root tip against something as a resistance. I don't want that. So we'll just position her. Fill her up. I do not have my repotting dates on my tags. I have an app for that, and that's where I will record that she was cleaned up, rhizome cut, and potted up fresh. The date goes into my notes as opposed to on the tag. All right. Let's pat her down a bit. And what I'm going to also do is make sure that the back of the rhizome here, where there's that open cut despite having cinnamon on it, take all the leca away. There's no need for it to be there. It is not serving any other purpose because there are no live roots back there. So letting it get some air so that it can dry out properly. And there we have it. Little fairy, classic example of how an orchid can go downhill in Lekka self-watering semi-hydro because it is one of those that dumps the roots and if not addressed, becomes toxic within the pot. So what you see on the outside will tell you what is happening on the inside. In most cases, <laughs> but if you're suspicious, check it out. Gut instincts might just prove you to be correct. Let's not exaggerate on the support. There we go. And there you have it. Quick potting up video. I was going to just title it, let's clean up another one based on my suspicions. I'm going to have to think of a new title because this is quite important if you're new to semi-hydro and you think that your orchids are absolutely doing great and what is everybody talking about? This is what everybody is talking about. Long-term, long-term success is always seems to be a bit dodgy and this is the reason why so I hope that a lot of people see this video so that they know they can grow in this method long term without any decay, death of the orchid. There we go. Let's give you a little bit more room in that kink. All right. Fabulous. There you are, little fairy. I know you're not going to give me nine blooms this year. How can I expect anything? But at least you showed me the signs. Sometimes we do not see the signs because the orchid doesn't tell us anything. But when you see signs like this, have a look. Especially growing in Lekka or Ceramis, it is, does not matter. The roots will be fine. If you're growing in Lava Rock, there will be a little bit of root damage or a lot in some cases. <laughs> Um, but Lekka and Ceramis, if you see something like this and it strikes you as weird, then have a look. It won't hurt it 
to have a quick look in the pot. The media stays the same, the environment stays the same, you're not doing any damage. So, I hope this was helpful to somebody. It certainly um, helps me as a follow-up video to my other video. Thank you very, very much for watching. I really appreciate having you here. Any questions, as always, any observations, as per usual, I welcome them in the comments below. Thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful day. Stay safe. Until next time. Bye.